Well, thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, for what promises to be an exciting game or two of Rainbow Six Siege. My name is Kyle Corbis Crow. I'm joined at the desk today by Joshua Fekes Quest, and we have an exciting matchup as it is going to be the University of Louisiana Lafayette taking on Iowa State University. A very important match, especially for Iowa State University. The top two teams of each division go on to the playoffs. This is the Gamma Division right now. And for a couple weeks, um, actually for a few weeks, it's been a uh, a three-way tie for first place between University of Ontario, uh, University, uh, uh, yeah, University of Ontario Institute of Technology, Northeastern University, and our uh, one of our, uh, our teams here today, Iowa State University, University of Lafayette, Louisiana Lafayette. They don't have a chance to go into the playoffs, but they can play spoiler for Iowa State University, and that's not something ISU want to happen today. And Lafayette, they're looking to pick up their first win. Their current record, 0-3 and 2. Three one-to-one draws, two two-zero losses. ISU trying to make that 0-3 and 3. Give them the loss and bring themselves tied in points now with Northeastern and Ontario. Results of this weekend pending. The first map we're going to go on to. Oh, actually, speaking of, before we get to maps, actually, we should probably talk about the bands. We didn't quite get to the bands yet. Well, we didn't get them on stream. So let's go and talk about those on the side of Iowa State. Actually, no, we'll start at the University of Lafayette because they're the blue side. They're going to start on there. Oh, they banned out Lion and Blackbeard. Now on the side of Iowa State University, uh, defending right now. Uh, first up defending, I should say, going to be Maestro and Echo. We saw last week, and we've seen it a couple times, Echo, uh, the Yokais have been stopping the bombs from, uh, from going off. You can stop that with the Yokai concussion blast. Uh, we saw it last week, last few seconds, and actually saved a game. I believe it was for Carleton University. But um, either way, go back in last week and check out that. And you can uh, you can see that a, a Echo is very pivotal. Not only does it give vision, but Yokais can actually stop the bomb from being planted, or the diffuser, sorry, the diffuser from being planted. Right, and and so I believe actually the the bands for uh, Lafayette here were Lion and Echo because each band or each team bans an attacker and a defender. Oh yeah, um, that's right. Yes. So, so Lion and Echo, it was it was definitely Lafayette that said, hey, they don't want to deal with it. Uh, so over on the defending side, it's it's going to leave Iowa State with some you know questions to answer. Um, we'll see what they do uh, come out here with because you know we, we saw the the Mira, we saw the Duck coming through to. Uh, you know, picks that not everyone opts for. Uh, Mira, obviously very strong. We've seen her banned a couple times. Um, you know, a little bit more lock, stock, and barrel with the likes of the uh, the, J the Jaeger, the, the the Legion. Seeing a lot of him coming out this, yeah. this past couple weeks. And, uh, of course, Valkyrie kind of fits in the most compositions pretty well as well. So, Yeah, well, we saw a lot of, like, recently, at least, I guess recently, we saw last week, definitely, a lot of uh, real uh, kind of... Uh, I guess stalling defensive teams. Legion being one of those prime, uh, you know, prime members in that team. But also, uh, we saw Ella as well as um, oh, Maestro. Yeah, we saw some Maestros as well. We're not going to be seeing Maestro this time around, obviously. But a lot of those, a lot of those uh, operators that you just are just annoy you. Echo being one of those as well. The concussion blast, anything to keep the enemy from advancing and keeping them at bay for just those few seconds run down the clock. That's kind of what uh, we've been seeing a lot of this time. But uh, coming out from uh, Iowa State, we have the Legion right now. They're actually going to go for uh, a little bit of defensive uh, vision, intelligence with the Valkyrie, having those cams out, and also some intel coming out from Mira, throwing up those, uh, throwing up the mirrors on the wall, being able to see if they're going to come through. And of course, we do have at least one strong heavy anchor on the side of Iowa State as well. That being in the dock, we see usually one each week, Maestro, Rook, or Dock. It's either it's usually either uh, Dock or Maestro, but since Maestro being banned out, we're not going to be seeing that one. But they do have the ACOG on the side for I, uh, ISU to be able to, to uh, try to spawn peek. Didn't see any spawn peeks this time, but can't right. match those. Can't match those little those very quick firefights as uh, one of the few defensive ACOG operators. You know, my eyes are turning pretty early on to Platt here on this Jackal. Or, I'm sorry, Ranger is on the Jackal. It's not Platt. Uh, Jackal is an operator we see banned out so much uh, coming out or, or just uh, prioritized, if not banned out. Excited to see what he's going to be able to do with this one. Meanwhile, been a slow uh, kind of tiptoe around the idea of breaching, and maybe oh. that's exactly why Twitch taken out in a way. No uh, chance at salvation there. That was Platt going on down and didn't even get to trade out any shots back so they'll find themselves at a clean man advantage for the side of iowa state now this could be a little tricky 
Jaeger and Jackal finding each other out. Ranger's taking the shots. He's, he's flipped a little bit, but Zach should be okay to just back on off here now. Looks like the reaching starting to have a little bit more in earnest. Yeah, they're going to play a little, little bit of the vertical game. Just mess around with Iowa State. Is his University of Louisiana Lafayette, but they're still going down. That is Thatcher and uh, uh, joining the Twitch going down. So not going to be able to dis disable any of those electronics while they breach in. And that's something you definitely want when you're going against a Jaeger. You can disable, uh, disable his gadget and be able to throw in a stun grenade or anything that you need. That is so pivotal coming up for here, but we might see another trade. Ooh, actually, this time, Ranger getting ready, just plays it right on through, and that's a big one. Almost finds the knife, but Young Z, Young Z was just on the outside of that one and, you know, did get the shots he needed quickly enough, so the reaction was there. He's going to stim pack right back up, get ready to just rock and roll through this one, but Ranger plastering through this door, making life so tough. The smoke as well is going to mean they're going to have to basically push blind through this one or push around, but they just don't have the time to do this. Five seconds left in the round, and this one seems all but locked up for Iowa State as Young Z finds another. And there's going to be another. Yeah, they actually took down both. Oh, no, that was, that was a team kill, actually. Never mind, that was a team kill. But either way, Iowa, Iowa State University picking up the first round in this, uh, this, I think it's Oregon. It's Oregon map. It's going to go on to round number two. And I do want to point out the animation to knife is actually a lot slower than it is to uh, pelt out some bullets. Uh, right. he, I mean, he, he knew he was there. Uh, obviously, because he turned around to knife, could have easily just you know, lined up his headshot and be able to take that one out that way. But uh, ended up going down because, again, the gun's faster than your arm action going against physics, which there are some in-game physics here that they work with. So right, it's something to keep in mind. This isn't Call of Duty. It's not just a quick little register no. that, uh, that no. locks in. But either way, speaking of lock-ins, we're going to see exactly what they do to decide to change up the strategy with this time. The fuse is going to be the sneak pick. We'll see what they do opt to... Uh, up to go with uh, you know something new. If anything, Maverick coming to the table. Yeah, they're going to sneak play the Twitch back in. No surprises there. And Zofia for Platt. That's got me interested because uh, it was actually uh, Platt that played Twitch last time. So Turtle Hawk swapping that one up. I believe he was the Thatcher last time. So in big, uh, well, no, I, I guess he was the Captain Staff. Yeah. Either yeah. way, big, big shakeup, all this considered. Yeah, no Capitao. They didn't really get to use him very well. I think he actually went down pretty early because you do want to use those smoke, uh, those smoke arrows along with the uh, the fire arrows to be able to sort of get, obviously get your team in undetected, or I wouldn't say undetected, but at least get them in without being shot, get them in safely, maybe even cut off a point of vision for the enemy, but also kind of play a little bit of a chess game with those fire arrows. You just weren't able to do that against Iowa State University. Went down a little bit too fast. Actually, I think, actually, I want to say Capitale was actually one of the uh, last operators to go down to for go. Uh, Lafayette, but still didn't get to use him, his maximum capability, Attackers going out to Sophia the instead. Attackers Let's see what they are able to do with that one, as Sophia does have the uh, impact option along with the concussion option underneath for the gun. Might be uh, looking at a vertical game coming in with the impact grenades. This is interesting to me too, because they've done a little bit of an operator game useful chairs with similar operators, but uh, different people playing them on the side of Iowa State as well. We've got the Mira coming in again. This time it's not Shatter playing it. It's gonna be Scooby. Uh, Shatter's on to Vigil and Zach has picked up the Legion, which was Scooby's operator from last round. So a little bit of growing pains to this strategy, maybe uh, just to change up, like that's how integral it is if they want to bring the Vigil in. So I'm expecting a lot of attention focused on Shatter here. I mean, when we saw them play against Unam a couple weeks back, Shatter was easily one of the standout players, right? He had several moments of just popping oh, off and, and was certainly a huge asset to his team. Now on this Vigil, it seems like they're kind of comping around him. Excited to see what that's all going to mean, but this round is on pace like the last one. We're not going to get too much action to the last 30 seconds or so. Yeah, Iowa State, they're just kind of sitting pretty right now as Lafayette. Flash they out. charge their way in. They have the Habana. This time, Twitch has not gone down this early. So still have the option of a Twitch drone being thrown in. Of course, you do have to contend with the, uh, uh, the Mira. You know that ISU are going to be able to see them coming in, and that nets them a kill. That's on Twitch this time again. Yeah, this time, nice, clean pickup. Was that Shatter that found that one? No, uh, I actually don't know. Okay. Either way, just picking up a kill at this point, especially onto the Twitch. Got to feel good. Twitch, the last one to go down last round as well, that said it was being played by uh, Suzuki there. And so switching it out, uh, or maybe Platt, but uh, either way, switching it out 
to to Turtle Hawk there. Maybe it was just the operator that's cursed. Who knows? But either way, two health bars down to about half on the side of Iowa State, but they're wishing they had that dock now over the Rook. But either way, still a tall order for the side of Lafayette to pick back up here. With just 45 seconds left on the clock. They're going to even the score back. They will find one. It's Yugzi that dies able to pressure this one out rook one of the stronger anchor plays that they like to pull up but gotta be careful with the legion down as well look at this it's a 43 3v3 now actually with 30 seconds left as the momentum seems to be swinging back into the hands of iowa state as they get another kill down and this is bad for major ranker as well they will come in and pick up yet another round two to zero at this point iowa state taking an early lead yeah, Iowa State you know, showing why they have been tied for first place early on already. They, uh, I think, they've only given up maybe two operators thus far, maybe three. I didn't actually, I don't even remember if they, if two died in that one, but I did know in the first one, only one went down. And they are staying very, uh, you know, very confident in their picks uh, coming in. Like you said, kind of playing a little bit of a musical operators going on, but still doing just fine. They may change it up here as they're hovering over a bandit. Dock being shown as well. Once again, you always do have one of those heavy anchors on the side of the uh, on the defensive side as you uh, want to bring over the, uh, the ACOG, try to trade some sort of firefight or at least get the uh, get the advantage of the ACOG over on the defensive side. Like so there's a very few operators that have that ability, but we have smoke and visual lesion. Bandit Dock being shown. They're going to switch that smoke out for Valkyrie though and get maintain that vision that they've been keeping and. Uh, as we know, in Rainbow Six, vision equals intelligence, and intelligence can easily win you the game. Well, we'll see. Picking up the Monty here, that's something that's need to locate and got me many bombs very interested to see how they're going to play this one out. Uh, you know, Turtle Hawk here Bomb located by has a chance to, to, to make something great happen on his team or just to go down in smoke. We also have Ranger coming in on the glass. That's something we saw Iowa State use to, I mean, tremendous effect against UNAM a couple weekends ago, or uh, oh, I believe it was two Thursdays back, um, so exactly two weeks ago. Yeah. We saw, uh, the might have been Shatter, just go on a tear with that uh, operator. So we'll yeah, see whether or not it has the same effect now over in the hands of Lafayette. Yeah, the preparation was... round is ending, and, and I'm curious actually to see how, how this Attack portion of the map plays out for him. I am too, and I, I do want to actually go back to that glass now, uh, real quick, because Iowa State, whenever they played glass, I mean they played gl glass quite a bit. They uh, they sniped through the top window if they were on the second floor, and if they were on the basement, they sent the glass to the top floor, created uh, two holes, one in the the second story and then one in the first story to see down all the way into the basement. So it'd be harder for them to shoot uh, for um, uh, the defensive side to shoot up at glass. We're not gonna see it this time because we have this a uh, little bit of like that that two-story defensive side right now but we are seeing one go down already one being sniped that was actually doc being sniped away on the side of uh, iowa state yeah losing the doc early that's gonna be pretty rough because at that point not only a gun down but you do lose the utility of that operator as well and yeah. a lot of circumstances especially since he's an anchor somebody that kind of you want to have last to go down if, uh, if you're gonna number him out there but Either way, going to be able to just try to reset here for the side of Iowa State. They've been down a man Defender last round, and they still turned out okay for it. But Defender we'll see. This is actually pretty bold play coming out by the Vigil here. Not going to go too yeah, heavily two seconds. that. Yeah, Kenja there did uh, decide he was going to try to make the hero play. It didn't happen, didn't find what he was looking for, and just moves on. This time, it's a slower play, but the Thatcher-Thermite combo may just be what the Doctor ordered for Lafayette. This is so classic Siege. They're ready to just blow it wide open, get the shots coming down here that they want. Diffuser drop for good measure. Actually just traded out in the hands of Glass. So. Attackers drop the diffuser. Not who he wanted on always, but not a bad person to hold it. That's a risky turnaround. And he just shows him his back at the absolute worst moment and shatter, taken out and punished for it. Iowa State looking a little bit on the back foot, maybe throwing off guard. They have the uh, Thatcher and Thermite, like you said, classic combo, throw the EMP, make sure that nobody can stop the Thatcher charge, blow that open. 
very well for Lafayette. Glass has the diffuser, so he can stay back and safe, since, be safe since he has a sniper rifle. Doesn't have to really be in the fray, not to mention he can make use of those smoke grenades. But we see another one go down on the side of Iowa State University. Working out very well for Lafayette. This actually might be their round. It's all Scooby. Can you get it? The answer is no. No Scooby snacks for this round. Attackers will win round three in Lafayette. Put one back on the board. Very nicely played by Lafayette. Like I said, choosing that a little bit of a different uh, different defensive position, not going to the second floor, not going to the basement, going to that two-story option. And sometimes that gives people a little bit of trouble. And we saw that Iowa State may not have had a, a great grasp on that. Or I'm sorry, it was uh, Iowa State choosing that second option. It may not have the gr a greatest grasp on how to defend that spot. Either that or Lafayette able to, uh, they just had it scouted. I believe, uh, I believe Lafayette actually was the one that chose Oregon, I think. Is that uh, correct? Yeah, they're that, attacking first. Sure, Lafayette uh, looks like Oregon was their choice. ISU yes. picked up consulate. So we'll see if they can you know, make it happen here and clutch out uh, kind of a from the back win on their, on their own map pick because they did lose those two critical rounds early. You know, Stealth play the mute into this and still deciding exactly what ranger is going to be pulling in, but it looks like the Maverick, actually the Jaeger, not the mute, is the lock for Yugzy. So some change-ups here, Zach on the Frost, but that's basically it. It's going to be a new one thus far for the side of Iowa State. We'll see how Zach does play this one out. I believe they up, they up for the second floor, that third floor looks like. I'm anxious to see how they use uh, how they use the frost. This is actually, I believe, this is the first competitive yeah, frost I've seen. The you throw the them box. into, uh, uh, put the traps down underneath a window, and that uh, that doesn't, of course, that doesn't prevent the enemy from shooting through the window, but it does give them a little bit of uh, you know something to think about if they want to go in through that window. But they have to shoot out the traps. And sometimes it's a little bit difficult to shoot the traps whenever you know somebody else is going to be looking at you to shoot to you know shoot you in the head as you're looking at those traps. So. Have to make a decision do you just do you go through the window do you even risk it or do you go all the way around into a different route and let the enemy guide where you go because that plays into their hands especially when you have a valkyrie you know they're going to go a certain route have them scouted out might be something that iowa state university is thinking about doing here that certainly adds an extra you know, tier of complication there and iowa state need to be careful just how much chaos they create on this map because it seems to work Kind of in the favor now over on the side of Lafayette when the round was a little bit more chaotic. Iowa State, you know, they, they like to find maybe some of the early picks in the both rounds they won. It was because they kind of took out Twitch early and forced these uncomfortable 4v5 situations with very limited time. So if they get caught up in the chaos there, this could complicate things. But either way, already on the inside for Lafayette with the Maverick there. We'll see what kind of sneak plays they're looking for. Mira is going to make this so much more difficult to breach if you are Lafayette. And with two minutes here, this seems like a, you know, a, a return to a little bit more of a comfortable composition from the side of Iowa State. We'll see if they continue to play it out like one, especially not having to worry about that glass this time. Means it could feel a little bit more comfortable around windows, maybe in smoke situations as well. Thermite and Thatcher, probably some of the big things to worry about as well. Ranger just tearing through the wall there with that blowtorch and he's carving out a good portion of it and gets Ooh, punished well. for it. It's a 3v5 just like that as two fall. That's their thermite as well. This has gone a little topsy-turvy now for this side of Lafayette and things are not looking good for them this round. Maverick is such a good operator because it's so hard to counter what he can do. His gadget isn't shut down by uh, any sort of device, any other gadget. But if you're caught out, uh, you know, blowtorching holes, and especially the way he was doing it, you're trying to just cut this big, you know, swath yeah, out of the wall. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna be headshot. That's the thing about Maverick is whenever you're you're blowtorching, it's a headshot almost guaranteed. But we may have ooh, a little bit of a contention here. Yeah, no, just tries to tries to get a nice little uh, play back there. We'll see if that's gonna be anything that. Uh, oh, you know, can happen. Yeah, Suzuki coming up big with, with a couple good shots and kills there for himself, but still in a really tough situation, especially with just as limited HP as he does have here. He'll need to play this just on the precipice of perfection here if he does want to yeah. make it happen in 40 seconds. And you know, Maybe this is a, a moral victory for the KD, uh, but you know he does Attackers seem to be their ready to make the play. Yeah, it does pick the diffuser back up, just peeking every corner. Oh, so slowly he's ready to find the kills should they be there. And that takes a lot of focus. <laughs> especially with the... 
Especially with the timer counting down. You're at 20 seconds Ooh. now, and he just gets hit by a lesion trap, which lowers his health even more. One more, and he will actually die. Yeah, yeah like, there it is. Speaking of, defenders <laughs> don't make round four Iowa State with the lesion traps. Oh, no, the frost trap. I'm sorry. Was it a frost trap? Yeah, it was a welcome mat. Look at that. Oh, he was, he was peeked through his, uh, through his scope the I entire know. time. Did Ooh. not have the peripheral to actually see that one. So nicely placed. Uh, frost trap and the uh the, the out of out of the left field pick paid off yeah no it's already making itself useful there as we might be turning our attention towards basement this could be interesting to see on what is the last round before the side switch what they will be planning for iowa state they want the basement cap can might add a fun dynamic to that we'll see if that is their uh, stealth pick out or not looks like uh so like if anyone in the sixth pick is going to change things up. And both teams seem to be holding steady right now. It wouldn't surprise me if they went with these compositions. The only thing that uh, might, might be a little strange is Shatter on mute. I feel like we saw him play it a couple weeks back, but nothing too crazy there. Turtle Hawk teasing the idea of swapping out for the Capital does so with his sixth pick. And so the Zofia, which really, you know, has not been converting too well for the side of Lafayette, anyway, will now be off the That is, to be fair, not much has been converting for the side of Lafayette. They are trying so hard, though, and uh, it's kind of coming down to the wire on this one. They, uh, like you said, they they need some victories here. It's one one to three right now, and uh, a cap can being picked up. That's going to take the place of the lesion, as far as the trap operator goes. So he's going to be placing those bombs on those open doorways. You got five of them to work with, so that's a little bit of a... Uh, I guess leeway, gonna predict where the enemy comes through and just try to lower their health bars. That's the thing, is that Cap Ken, he doesn't actually, you know, stop yeah, you from coming in, but he does make it less shots that you have to, you know, shoot out to be able to Five take down an enemy. And, uh, that is going to be something that is going to really help ISU. They've been doing a great job just lowering the health bars ever so slightly of these enemies, of the, of, the, uh, of Lafayette, I should say. Especially with the Legion, but again, Cap Ken, it takes a little bit more damage when it's an explosive over a poisonous needle. Yeah, I mean, we've seen this war of attrition almost with the health bars come out very much uh, willing to play that kind of style on the side of Iowa State. And Lafayette, they play a little bit slower, and so that slow bleed really just adds up in all these long, drawn-out, overtime exchanges. It's not really going to be something that's as worrisome if you're just, you know, in the faces of your enemy on just this raw aggression pattern. A bomb has been located. Which is what I would actually expect to see out of Iowa State once we do get the side switch, but getting ahead of myself just a little bit there. Vigil's found himself a little low on the health bar. Young Z, uh, you know, not uncommon for him to be the first one to really get into the, the big game of Bloody Knuckles there. We'll see whether or not that does come into play a little later because two minutes left on the clock. This round's looking like a must win if you're Lafayette. And they are going to actually go 4v5 whenever they need that, that win. Yeah, losing Thermite, he did blow, each, uh, blow one of the walls out, so he's partially used there. It's not a complete loss as far as uh, practicality goes, but of course you always want those that extra operator, the extra gun on the, uh, on the map to be able to try to even this one up. But speaking of evening it up, Ooh. it's now 4v4. Yeah, no, that's going to be a pretty big takeaway, all things considered, too. Yeah, uh, was that Suzuki? Shatter was the one to fall, and Yug Z. That health bar coming down a little low, punishing on the other end. So with this one, it's still the Thermite down on the side of Lafayette, and that's really not what you want. But, you know, they have options on their side. We'll see whether or not now Zach can make anything happen on the cap can. He's not going to come up big in the fight just yet and has to be careful how he plays this one because he is just an inch away from death right now. Yeah, he's going to use that uh, use that explosive charge bit. Yeah, there he goes. He actually goes down. One shot to the foot would have done it. Easy. Oh, it's a 3v2 at this point. Gets a little tricky. Now, this is where Maverick you know, can play a little bit in that hatch play. Yeah. Come to think of it, he's not as exposed as he was trying to cut out this big, you know, uh, patch of the wall. We'll see whether or not Mira and Valk, the dynamic duo, can make this one happen. It is... A tall order with these two operators. Scooby, somebody that, you know, can do it. Ken, just somebody we've not seen as much of. So not sure whether or not you know, he'll really be able to convert this one. But ooh, that's a pretty big one. Brings us right back even to 2v2. And now time is definitely on the side of Iowa State. They want to be 4-1 and one coming into the side switch. They want to only have to win two rounds on the attacking side. 
We'll see if that's something that's possible for them. 10 seconds, Ten seconds left. To go. Flashbang goes off, doesn't find anyone. That's going to be good for Iowa State. It now Five just depends left. on how they breach. This Capitao. Ooh, ooh, it's tough, and that's not going to be enough. Yeah. Say so this Capitao had such a low health bar. One shot would have done it, and he, he was able, able to take a. Uh, Kenja was able to take out two at a time there. Hmm. Beautiful play by Iowa State. They hold the strong lead coming into round number six. They have three rounds padding them here, and we'll see now what they change up. It's already hey, glass. instantly glass. Yeah, we, we thought we might see it come out here. Zach, the player that would want to come away with the with the glory of the glass buck as well. I believe that's a pretty common one for Scooby, if I'm remembering correctly, but... Yeah, this, this composition seems a little bit more Iowa State. You can already tell the way they want to change things up, even though it's so many similar operators. The Finca being teased here is something that's particularly interesting to me. They now, used it last week. Or they used it the, two weeks ago as well. We'll see if they do opt for the Capitao as pick six. That's going to be correct. The Cav as well, something that's uh, interesting for me to see on the side of Platt. So going to be uh, you know a little threatening there. We are going to see more than likely Zach on the glass being able to, uh, you're going to see, so he's going from the junkyard and there's a, a, a truck that you can get up onto and then snipe into the second floor window. Um, if anybody, of course, with an ACOG glass, especially though, because he does have the sniper rifle. And we saw so many times a couple weeks ago that Zach was using that, almost abusing it against the enemy. Okay, you have to start junkyard to do it. That's where the truck is at. So we're going to be seeing that again from Zach, the only one going to junkyard. We're going to have, going to be watching out for that as Lafayette, they are starting on the second floor. I'm very anxious to see if Zach is able to replicate that magic from two weeks ago and able to, uh, you know, get the, get the snipe, those, uh, you know, uh, first 10 second uh, uh, snipe shots out from the junkyard. Yeah, it's going to be tricky to see whether or not he can pull that one off yet again. I mean, I think you got to be, assuming if you're Lafayette, and you know you got to play Iowa State coming up in a couple weeks. You know your schedule for the year already. You're watching their game when they play, yeah. right? You're scouting your opponents, especially since all play right now is divisional. Of course, you're just going to be watching every game of your division. So Lafayette, yeah, they have a chance to kind of not be fooled by this. We'll see whether or not it works because we saw a lot yeah, of Iowa like State strategy three. coming out in Oregon a couple weeks back. So uh, we'll see whether or not it's something that, that holds steady. And, you know, it's – it's a pretty common strategy, all things Attackers considered. So it's not like they, they should be blind to it at all. It's just some of the things that maybe Iowa State did that, that made it feel pretty clean. Uh, just catching out UNAM, who, granted, is at the bottom of the division. So, you know, if there's anyone it should technically work against, it's, it's UNAM. That's, yeah, that's very correct. Uh, Lafayette, they're not having the greatest time against Iowa State either, though. And it might just be it might just speak volumes for how good Iowa State is or... Lafayette maybe just a little bit better than UNAM. We're going to see it. It doesn't look like Zach is catching anyone out with the glass, but Capiteo Scooby actually picks up one. That was a solid headshot from him. Yeah, just cleanly tearing right through it. Does find, uh, was that Platt over on the side of, uh, uh, no, no, Platt's, Platt's playing the, uh, Platt's playing the Cav. Cav. So, right, a little, little, little turned around on that one, but either way, two minutes left. This is not as fast as I was expecting we might see out of the side of oh. Iowa State. And now going 4v4, that's actually a tricky situation as well. Located they do attackers. lose the Capital, who found that first kill, just gives it right back up. Makes it a little bit tricky. Can't stay in the same spot whenever you're going to be able to, whenever you get a headshot like that. You have to rotate, have to move somewhere. And he didn't really move too far away from his kill point. So they're able to be scouted out by Lafayette. But... ISU are they are firing back, making a 3v4 now. Yeah, ready to just keep this pressure up. And the was that the, the dock they just took out there yeah, as well? Is, so yeah, that, that makes it a little bit a little bit trickier for them to handle. Don't want the dock dying so early on the into things. And so now ball. it's down to a lesion, a cav, and a mira. The lesion traps already doing their job, so that is the good news. And, and Little little ping on the map as to where some opponents might be actually helps out, brings it even to a 3v3 here. And now look at the operators left on the side of Iowa State. This is not an easy team to clutch out with, especially now that's just Glass and Thatcher in a 2v2. I mean, they can both pull this off, but Thatcher's going to have to be working overtime because Glass in these long hauls, not going to matter, actually. Defender's going to take away round six, and Lafayette 
on the defense. Pick it up pretty huge. Suzuki gonna find the credit for the last one here. Snipped it right out and locked down the kill. So now three to two. Not a huge, I'm sorry, four to two. Not a huge gap between these teams anymore. And that was a very nice play by the Cav, able to uh, you know come up from behind and flank as the members of ISU push in. So uh, staying quiet, obviously that's what Cav does, stays quiet. It has the ability to be able to move very, very uh, quietly. Not completely silent, but very, very quietly. It will sneak up on one of those members as well, with Suzuki picking up the other one on the other side. So nicely played by Lafayette. They are not going to go down, uh, you know, quietly into the night they're going to give a, a loud roar and may even shake up isu as uh we're not going to see a glass this time around it's going to be in the laundry room this time in the supply room laundry room i should say basement as a lot of people want to generalize it but not going to be seeing a glass popping out this time a jackal coming out for zach mostly i believe everything else yeah everything else is going to be the exact same yeah it's actually a, a swap up for the jaeger i believe i don't think we saw the jaeger come out uh for ranger That's last game yeah, that's for Lafayette. Yeah, I, uh, sure. yeah. Okay, gotcha. I, I, I see. I was, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, little, yeah, you got it. Sure. Little turned around, but yeah, just going to try the same thing, just with a Jackal in place on the side of Iowa State. Jackal, an operator that, you know, we see intermittently banned. Somebody that uh, people are a little hesitant to play against, or maybe they don't even want their own team to play it in some circumstances. Say, hey, you know what, like, let's just remove this as an option for both sides and focus up on how we can win without the jackal we got the thermite and the thatcher here locked in on the side of isu and left. if both can stay alive early enough you know this is something that's going to be particularly huge Attackers especially when you're trying to breach into the basement every the reinforced the wall is just so tricky there that seems to be why they would want to opt for the jackal here they know hey what good is glass going to be in this basement we're not too worried about you know those particular sight lines so get the Jackal, get a little bit of, uh, you know, stocking play, really catch out some of those roamers and try to win the game that way. We'll see whether or not it's a strategy that works for ISU. Surprised by how slow they've been on their breaches just yet, but as I'm saying, that Shatters popping right in, ready to rock and roll. A shatters can't do that with the Zofia. I believe that's other ladies who he's on right now, but... Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we're just, yeah, I do like the Jackal pickup. That's actually showing that ISU respects Lafayette because if they do that very cheeky uh, top floor all the way down to basement glass uh, sniping option, that doesn't usually work. That actually is not supposed to work as well as it did uh, a couple weeks ago. But they're showing some respect over to Lafayette saying, hey, these guys are challenging. We we, we do have a chance exactly. to lose if we get cocky. So got to go with the more serious operator uh, whenever the object objective is in the basement with the Jackal. Going to be able to track the enemy where they are, and that does leech onto them quite a uh, quite a few seconds. So, going to have that information again. Like I said earlier, information does win you games a lot of times in this in this one. And speaking of information, we do know that it is now a four v five as the jackal goes. Or no, sorry, Jaeger goes down. Yeah, definitely not what they wanted out of that one. Jaeger just clipped right off his ranger. You know, one of the better players by the looks of it on the side of Lafayette in a little bit of trouble. They have downed the thermite over on the side of ISU, so we'll hopefully get him back up and back to the races there. Looks like that is the case. That Cav taken out and away. That is bad news bears for the side of Lafayette. At this point, they got to be careful now with the way they want to finish out the rest of this round because there's still five very angry attackers left on the side. They have a minute left as well. Plenty of time to find themselves three kills. Thermite and Thatcher already getting ready to breach that first hatch. And they do have the three anchors, so they do know. ISU have a good idea that Lafayette are going to be staying around that objective. You take out the, the Jaeger, you take out the Cav. That is no more roamers on the side of Lafayette. And this is one of the big advantages of shooting down the hatch is that if you get downed, you can easily back up and away from being taken out completely. As we see, uh, I believe that was um, yeah Thatcher go yeah Thatcher being down but not out and back up. And now we see ISU able to take control of this game. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to be putting it just within yeah, one round of victory, almost certainly here, as the diffuser goes down. Suzuki, the clutch, a little too far out of reach on that one. Round number seven going the way of ISU. Lafayette now, uh, basically just to win out. That is their only remaining hope in this particular game. One, keep in mind, Lafayette's a school that we've seen have a lot of... Uh, ties here draws throughout their their you know two game series they actually have more draws than they do losses yeah at three draws and two losses so we'll see whether or not 
on the map pick of what would be ISU then, Consulate coming up next. That's something they can pull off. Of course, not writing them out. They've still managed to find two very solid-looking round wins. And so whether or not they can replicate that and maintain that consistency is the big question because obviously they've, on their two wins, looked to just be a, a superior team that round, right? Nothing looked gimmicky. Nothing looked like, oh, hey, maybe they shouldn't have won that. It's just a consistency. So if they can find that rhythm and, and kind of stop the momentum that Iowa State's been building here, Lafayette still have a shot in this game. But it is getting tougher, right? Yeah, and it comes down to an adaptation at that point. Uh, we see ISU changing up. Obviously, they took away the glass. They put in the jackal. This time around, they're actually taking away the Thatcher, yeah, putting in the Habana. So uh, adaptation is so important. Yeah, uh, yes, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, uh, Thermite taken away, putting in the Habana. Now on the other side, might be seeing a little bit of adaptation coming out as they put in the Ella over the Cav. So adding a little bit more of that uh, delayed, uh, uh, one of those delaying operators along with lesions, being able, uh, you know, making sure that you know, you know exactly where they're coming in from if they hit one of your uh, one of your devices, one of your gadgets laying down the trap. So that is, uh, it's kind of like, I, I called it last week's pseudo information. It's very good information regardless, but, you know, if someone does hit a Legion trap, you know exactly where they're at. That's the same thing with Ella. So it serves two purposes. Left. Slow down the enemy, damage them a little bit as far as Legion goes. Ella, you don't damage with a concussion Attack blast, but you do know bomb. exactly where they're at Attackers when they hit that thing. Yeah, I actually like the Ella pickup, too. Something they've been teasing. Ella was constantly in the first pick rotation, and then they kind of six-picked it away for Cav each time. This time, oh. ooh, danger zone getting spawn peeked out. That is just rough. And that's not going to be a good start over here for the likes of ISU in a round that obviously with a win puts them through to the next game in the series. So <laughs> definitely don't want that on what's supposed to be your closer, right? This is supposed to be the shock and awe to really boost you through to the next round. And they find it back at four and four, just shooting through the foundation there. A little cheeky rip that's going to be bad news over for the side Attackers have recovered uh, Lafayette. Their they obviously don't want to lose that Ella so early on, and, and yet they have anyway. So now the Vigil, a big question mark as well, but everything else wouldn't be too surprised to see it you know, kind of pan out as normal. I love that kill through the foundation. It's little quirks like that uh, that can really set your team apart when you know the in and out, ins and outs of every map in Oregon. Being one of the most popular maps in Collegiate, ISU, they definitely know this one. Know uh, you know know this map to, at heart, uh, by heart, I should say. So, very nice pickup there on the side of ISU. It is now four v four. Ella being taken out. Zofia taken out. But now we see the visual go down as well. Oh man, this is going to be a tough situation. Now they started out with such a good pickup for Lafayette, and yet now ISU taking the momentum back for themselves. And this well, is was dangerous. Game. Wow, look. That, at that was Capiteo. Just torn right through, had nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, and the kill came so easily. Another one into 1v4, and it's all on Suzuki again. He's been the last remaining member several times now and was not able to clutch it up once. We'll see if yet again he can make anything happen here. Looks to be a pretty grim situation, though. That diffuser is going to be going down any second now, and when it does, it only gets all the more complicated as his time to finish this will be limited. A bomb has been located. Seeing a smoke bomb go out, uh, go off is Ooh. so intimidating. But as I say that, Suzuki not going down without a fight, but he does go down to Vich. Attackers winning the round eight. The attackers being ISU. So they're going to go on to this next map with their heads held high and looking confident. Yeah, the GG's come down. And keep in mind, this was the map pick of Lafayette here. They wanted to play Oregon. ISU picking up Consulate as their opt opted map afterwards two weeks back oregon was actually the map pick of iowa state so obviously it is ull's map pick uh but this time isu you know showed that they were obviously not too uh too afraid to play it and so now it just becomes a matter of winning out on their own map pick to get the points to tie back up and get where they need to be in contention for this gamma division so we move on to Consulate. It is going to be interesting. Again, it's a momentum thing every now and then, especially ISU. They have momentum coming into this game today, into the uh, into both matches, uh, just facing Lafayette, because, again, they are fighting for something way more important than Lafayette's fighting for. Lafayette, they are out of this tournament, or at least they're not out of this tournament. They're out of the playoff contention. ISU, they are not. They have so much more drive to fight tonight and to, you know, uh, 
play their best because if they win this one, it will once again, and it's been tied for a while, but once again, have a three-way tie for first place between Ontario and Northeastern and Iowa state. They don't want to have a blemish on the record. If they lose here, this could almost guarantee that Northeastern and Ontario are going to go on to uh, the playoffs for the gamma division and Iowa state. They want to have something to say about that one. And they're not going to let Louisiana uh, Lafayette stop them here as uh, again, so much drive for ISU, and we've seen that now. They only dropped two rounds in uh, in the first map. So we're going to see if they can do better on consulate or just keep up the pace, not change anything, keep it cool, only adapt uh, the operators as they go. They're going to be attacking first, I believe. Yeah, they were defending first last map. They're going to be attacking first next on the uh, consulate. So let's see what they can pull out here. Tricky stuff for them, but... We'll see what they can make happen here. This is going to be the first time, actually, that uh, you and I have seen a collegiate game on consulate here, Fekez. So that's going to be exciting. Bands coming out. We'll see if they do opt for anything differently as ULL. With a little bit of time here, we'll see what they go for. If it's just going to be consistent, maybe taking that lion out again. Don't want to see it. It is Blackbeard, actually, that will be banned. So it was, I believe, ISU's banned last time around. Maybe ULL saying, hey, we're not so worried about it. Let's see what the second ban is here. This time it's going to be Lion. Not going to have that uh, that gadget coming out. That's going to be the... Uh, the tracker, right? Yeah, the tracker. Yeah, very much so. As uh, You can't move. It's not, not technically a tracker, but it tracks your movements. If you want to call it technical jack jackals a tracker. If you really if you want to get serious about this, but... Yeah, Jack. Jack. Like the Batman is... voice for that. If you you're just drop the block us there. <laughs> yeah, Jack. Jackal's technically a tracker. Lion. He just makes sure the uh, enemy is only tracked when you move. I'm gonna see what this defensive ban is going to be. It's going to be the Echo, which is what we saw last time around as well. ISU banning that one out. So not going to have those yokai's interrupting the bomb uh, being diffused, and also going to take away a little bit of the division. Uh, the uh, uh, surveillance game, I should say. Coming it's out game. It's another, it's another yeah, top yeah, yeah. game here. It's, it's well within the same wheelhouse. Yeah, it actually is. Actually, I meant to say vision game, but then I division. I don't know why I did that, but either way, <laughs> gonna have that. I, I opted over to surveillance. This is the larger word, anyways, and essentially what Echo does. I feel like I'm rambling too far on, and thankfully Valkyrie was also taken out. Speaking of surveillance, so there's actually five cameras all together uh, taken away. So you have the Maestro with his evil eyes. I believe that's about it, um, except for the pseudo information you get from like lesion traps, Ella bombs, things like that. Right, we'll see whether or not that's something that does come into play. You There's, have to have a major at this yeah, point. For sure, no surprises there. So Major Fracture gonna be the one to opt for that, barring any, uh, of course, uh, sixth pick. Nothing too big changed up besides. I mean, we still have the lesion. Smoke is something that, you know, we, we've obviously seen uh, very comfortable for the side of uh, Lafayette on the defense there. The attacking, uh, you know, seemingly aggressive composition. We've seen them play all of these operators on the side of uh, ISU here, but we haven't seen them all in conjunction. There's almost always been a Thermite and or Thatcher really breaking things up there. This time, not the case. They're not going to go for the Thatcher unless it's a sixth pick. And it's not, so, yeah, Defender pretty aggressive composition, all things considered, coming out from the side of uh, ISU. I, actually, I really like this. We'll see how aggressive uh, they can be. Yeah, you have Buck, Jackal. Oh, I'm not sorry. Uh, 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 yeah, well, I mean, Jackal's aggressive in his own right as well. But you have Buck and Zofia, who are extremely aggressive, especially, again, with the vertical Bob game. And also just, well, just getting your face if they want to as well. But they excel at the vertical game. And then you have Capiteo, another aggressive uh, operator with his arrows. Yeah, yeah, like you said, very aggressive uh, uh, composition coming out from ISU. I'm going to really be interested to see how Lafayette is able to deal with this one. Uh, and I, I kind of wish they would have stayed with the Ella over the Cav because with such aggression, Five you don't, I don't, I don't know if Cav is going to stand a huge chance. You do have two roamers, that it being the uh, Jaeger and the Cav Jagger on the side of Lafayette. And then you have the anchors with, I believe that is, yeah, a smoke. I think that's a smoke. I don't think it's a mute. Pretty sure it's a uh, smoke. The, that is smoke, yes. Okay, so it's a little pixely. Can't see if there's an X on the face there. But you have the smoke, the lesion, and then the uh, Maestro. That's going to be your heavy anchors there. But, Man, like you said, so aggressive, uh, such an aggressive comp coming out from ISU Attack that I wonder how Cav and Jaeger are going to hold up here. Yeah, we'll see if it's something that they do really Attack play as aggressively the as they can because there's obviously a lot of wiggle room they have 
with how aggressively they want to push things out. It seems like a little bit of, you know, hesitation maybe. Man, could just be patience either way. It's it's hard to tell. Obvi obviously, the first round of any map is usually two teams kind of trying to figure each other out. Some some shots across the plate and so forth is never going to be the fastest to say, you know, a fifth or a sixth, uh, or like, not six rounds on one side, but a fifth round on the same side. And people are, are opting to play a lot quicker there. Speaking of quick, it's an easy quick kill located. for Platt. He does find that one on the Cavs. So just as we are calling it into question, taking out the Jackal gives us all the answers we need as to whether or not that will be more valuable. But it's traded back. No surprises there. That does seem to be a theme this game. And going four to three, as they do find Hibana as well. Those are two very important early game ops. I still like that the Buck is alive on the side of ISU. But besides that, the Zofia, the Capital. You know, these are all still operators that can give you just hell throughout the remaining parts of this game. A little tricky with the Maestro alive, the cameras, they have to be worried about the smoke there actually going to delay the entry from Buck here. He does not want to get fooled up with that, and who could blame him? The Habana going down on ISU really hinders this aggressive comp because you want to rely on Habana to hard breach and be able to have your backup to be able to, you know, be, again, be aggressive. And without that hard breach, it's going to be so hard for ISU to really get in here, especially now it's a 3v4. And Attackers I haven't seen have too much diffuser. action. It's been really, uh, it's been slowed down a little bit ever since those two operators on the side of ISU went down. They decided to, you know, halt the aggression a little bit and just sort of back it up, reel, reel the game back into their pace. And we're seeing them outside of the objective. Smoke doing what he does, keeping everyone at bay. And there's the evil eye. I, do I actually like really like the evil eye with, with the smoke in conjunction, just shooting yeah. right through it. That's very clever and, and going to really scare off a lot of the side of ISU, but look at that buck coming through on this one. Does find himself a kill, but gets killed for it. It's a 3v2, yet again, make it a 2v2. As the remaining members of Capital and Zofia are up against Maestro and Legion, and this is actually where it gets tricky because Legion, maybe not the best one to reclaim a diffuser spot as well. Play more on it, that's gonna be tricky, but look at that, it's a 2v1 now. Actually, two Defenders versus zero. They just have to get around the play more. They do sniff it out. They're not going to be intimidated by that. And that is going to be the first round going over to Lafayette this time. ISU, no early momentum in the second game. And, you know, we talk about playing spoiler, getting that draw, as is common for Lafayette here, would be a, a big way to do it. Yeah, that is something very interesting to point out. Yeah, they do have three draws. They have the most draws in the Gamma Division right now. Like you said earlier, at three. And in fact, they actually have the most draws in the entire league right now of, of, of uh, University Siege League. So uh, if anybody can do it, it is them. They're on a good start to that with their one at Consulate. The first round being one. It looks like there's going to be some connection issues from ISU. They're going to be reconnecting, I believe, in just a moment. But... We can talk about a little bit about that draw because it's going to be so huge. Uh, you know, again, it's not really for it's not going to be huge for Lafayette because again, they're out no matter what. But if they can spoil Iowa State, that essentially puts Gamma Division uh, with Ontario and Northeastern going onto the playoffs, and that is going to be a, a very you know obviously predicting where uh, who's uh, going to go on, how that division is going to go, and Iowa State they're not going to be happy about that one losing this first round. You know, they can call it anything. You can call it anything with the. Uh, uh, with the connection issues there, but regardless, it is 1-0 right now, and uh, they are on the back foot as, uh, again, they're going to be reconnecting here. Yeah, no huge surprises with, uh, with that. Actually, this probably favors Iowa State just a little bit, gives them some time to to catch their breath and kind of reset throughout all this. Um, let's talk about what went wrong there. So a connection issue... Frustrating can slow down momentum, but if you're not the team with momentum off the rip, then, you know, it's just maybe a little bit of a free breather there. And and so, obviously, Iowa State, they want to be in this game play and getting ready to rock and roll just as much as the rest of us. But all things considered, we'll probably enjoy and take advantage of this time. We might see a little bit of a new strategy come out from them. The uh, same bands. I don't know if there's a way to set the round score already, so I think we'll just have to keep kind of a mental track, making sure that that round still counts. So running through the bands, all things back to normal. Same bands as the last game, just with this time they did opt for the Valkyrie instead of the Maestro. We saw that Maestro coming out to great success for the likes of 
Lafayette there. They did play that one out, and uh, you know he's one of the re- remaining operators. Ranger played that one with a uh, aplomb. And that's something that I actually really like with the uh, Valkyrie and the Echo Ban is you almost you know, essentially have to have a Maestro because you need that extra camera, uh, those two extra cameras. You need extra vision. You need extra intelligence in this game. Uh, you, I, you, it, it's so rare seeing a game go by where you don't have a Valkyrie, you don't have an Echo, or you don't have a Maestro. One of those three. And how, taking away the other two surveillance operators essentially means you have to have the Maestro, being able to get that extra intelligence, um, see where the enemy is coming through. Without that, you're go, you're uh, very heavily handicapped as far as uh, you know, being blind goes. So I'm gonna I wouldn't be surprised if Lafayette picks um, picks Maestro every round, and same with ISU once they get under the, under the defending side. May not be seeing too many rooks or docks, as those are the only two that are usually interchangeable from the May show due to the ACOG, uh, the heavy, uh, heavy anchoring ACOG operators on the defensive side. So I predict a whole lot of May show this uh, in this map. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it did slip right on through. And so this time, you know, you, 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 you punish it. You just, you get it through. You never give them an inch with it. So maybe remind them why it was so fairly banned, especially here in the second game. To say, okay, you know what, we think the Valk was a bigger deal. You say, okay, well, was it? Because in a lot of ways, Maestro is is just a more annoying version of Valkyrie that can that can really cause you some grief. Obviously, there's some difference in the particulars of it all there. But regardless, teams hopefully looking ready here. Yeah. Uh, Maestro, going back to Maestro, your comparison to Maestro and Valkyrie. No, definitely right. I mean, it, uh, Valkyrie is a lighter, faster version of uh of maestro i believe it's 2-2 with the uh actually i think we're out of uh out of the game if we can still be heard though can we still be heard i believe we can still be heard it's uh actually 2-2 no you're good uh, so it's actually 2-2 uh for valkyrie with the speed and the armor well, i believe maestro it's 1-3 for in favor of the armor so you actually do have a little bit of durability not to mention you do have the uh, light machine gun option on the side of maestro there's a, a subtle differences Big thing about Valkyrie, Valkyrie, of course, obviously is the speed does help being a little bit even there, being a good status quo, but that extra camera is so pivotal. And being able to toss it, that's a thing you cannot do with Maestro. You cannot toss your cameras. You have to anchor them to a wall. While uh, Valkyrie, you can throw them outside, which in some right. cases, extremely pivotal. You can throw them outside. They're also fully rotational at a 360 degree uh, uh, for 360 degrees. So if you throw them on our ceiling, they can look all around. And that's, again, something that's so advantageous for uh, picking up a Valkyrie for. Absolutely. So, you know, whether or not they would opt for it, whether or not they would play into that nuance, not relevant in this game because off the table makes it easy. So, yeah, I would not be surprised to just see Maestro rolling in, constantly playing to that evil eye. We'll see whether or not they would opt for anything like a Mira in conjunction, or the, the Maestro would kind of fill another spot. Um, teams usually swap out Mira for something a little bit... We see if, I would say, for like the Smoke or the Mute, kind of fill that same role that a lot of teams want to come in here with, it, at least from what I've seen thus far in Collegiate. So with that, yeah, I, I really can't think of any operator that would be just opted out in the same space for Maestro. If the Valk is gone here, you might pull out a Vigil or something, but... Yeah, maybe. It's, it's, it's That's been so situational. We've seen it here and there. I don't know if it'll be. I don't know if it'll really be finding its way back into this one. Yeah, like I said, the cameras are so important right now. So yeah, Maestro, he is definitely the... I, I'm going to say the MVP of defense right now because that's kind of... You, just, you need those cameras. And if they don't pick those cameras, or pick up Maestro, um, they're, again, they're going to go with the Doc or a Rook. But again, Maestro just... It's just in this situation with those two bands, so much better than, in my opinion, than Rook or Doc. But we're going to see how it's picked up Lafayette and uh, ISU. They may have other ideas. They uh, they may actually play this game a little bit better than me. I don't know if they, uh, you know, I've been, I, I, I feel like I do, I do know a little bit about it as far as the defensive side, about, about the competitive level of it and how to, how to interpret how the game's going to go. But we're going to see how they do it. They can, Collegiate, you know, they can always throw a curveball. As they, uh, you know, Collegiate loves to go on to comfort picks, uh, comfort picks every now and then. So, still getting the game set up. We have to see, we have to get to that point first before we even see what they pick. So, uh, game is still being set up as there's some uh, tech issues going on. We saw the disconnect from ISU. 
And uh, this is us filling uh, dead air, Corvus. Yeah, and that's certainly something that uh, you, know, you, you have to do in this young industry that is esports, this uh, you know blossoming <laughs> entity that uh, that's, that's not always ironed out. You know, we're not the budgets of the big sports leagues. We're not uh, the, the exposure just yet, although. You know, plenty of uh, plenty of experts will tell you esports certainly trending that way. I feel exposed every time I play Siege, honestly. Everybody, mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I don't, I don't really, I don't really feel. I'm not very good at playing the game unless I'm like 31 years old. My reaction time's horrible. Oof. So, uh, <laughs> so fun fact: you and I were talking a little bit earlier uh, off air about a, a mutual love for tennis. Um, one parallel I always love to draw uh, in te in tennis to esports is. You've always got this ongoing discussion of you get these real young players in tennis around 24, uh, at least for men's tennis, is when you're going to be hitting your physical prime, right? Um, reaction times, just obviously strength of muscle, um, just the ability to wear somebody down on the court is is almost uh, you know unparalleled uh, at the age of 24 with with just some of the best players, but yes. Uh, some of the greats really don't start hitting their technical prime until well into their 30s. It's just when they have the, the, the sheer technical mechanical ability down to absolute perfection. So whenever two of those players get going against each other, it creates this really kind of interesting storyline. So to tie back into esports here and say, yes, reaction times, absolutely important, especially in a game like Siege where, where reaction is just king. Um, yeah, you know, something something that age can can really you know play a, a huge factor. But you know, you take a look at some other games, something like uh, you know the Counter Strike scene, which is also very heavily reaction based, and yeah. you got plenty of pros over the thirty mark in the fighting game scene. You know, it, it's almost standard at this point to be twenty eight plus. Uh, uh, and I guess I'll join you in shooting down my excuse that I'm old because Serena Williams is like thirty seven years old and still be destroying the court out there. Hmm. If we're gonna get, we're gonna go back to tennis, but yeah, and then no, we're gonna, yeah, I mean, I, who's the oldest? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know actually who the oldest person in esports is. I mean, I know Elimination is up there on. Uh, that's over in League of Legends for those yeah. who don't watch League of Legends. He's, he's I think he's in the 30s at this point. You know, I know some Halo pros well into their 30s at this point. Um, so scene I followed pretty pretty closely. Um, I, again, I think the fighting game scene is really just where all the age saturation is in esports. Uh, some of the older older games because you know the fighting titles don't really change that up as much they're not as uh as kind of flavorful maybe as as esports uh traditional other esports are um you know you have league of legends which changes all the time you have games like uh rainbow six series where you know siege is is one of the first ones to make a you know a really fun headway into esports here um I think, I think certainly the most interesting of the franchise uh to date but now this discussion of okay, well, are they gonna just keep adding the siege as this platform? Is there any, gonna be any commercial pressure from, you know, uh, stakeholders and, and uh, you know, people who would obviously profit from Rainbow Six Siege too? How's that gonna impact the idea of the esports scene? We're getting really deep line. into the business here. Yeah, I just, I just, have recovered their yeah, like we said earlier, filling dead air. But another thing we could also talk about are the other divisions on the side uh, for the uh, University League here. For Probably a bit more pertinent. Uh, maybe, because we also have the Alpha, Beta, and Delta Division. We've been only focusing on the Gamma Division the, the last few weeks as far as Thursday Night Casco, but there's three other divisions to worry about. And those, uh, a couple of those have actually already been set in stone. Uh, that being the Alpha and, the, uh, I guess not set in stone, but it's looking pretty good for the top two teams in the Alpha and the Delta Division. Over on the Alpha side, we have Arizona State University and the University of Maryland uh, College Park. They are uh, in in uh, you know in first and second place respectively. With I don't Arizona, think Arizona State. can get out. I don't I think, think they're, so. I think they're guaranteed to be at least one or two oh, at this point. With they are be, points. They are because I believe we are we're in week six right now. There's a seven week season. They yeah you're right. They can't actually get out. Now with that being said, University of Maryland I. Wanna see, no, they can actually be tied with George Mason. Right. Uh, so George Mason over on the Alpha Division still has a chance to make it into the second spot and go on to playoffs. And like we said earlier, 
The top two spots do go on to playoffs from each division. And we're going to go down to the Delta Division. I'm going to skip Beta. We'll save Beta for a second because Delta yeah, Division, the they actually have a, uh, a tie for first place as well. Rochester Institute of Technology, that's RIT. And uh, some of you may recognize them. RIT is actually real prominent in the shooters uh, over on CSGO. I believe they had a, a, a Quake team. Is that right? Yeah, uh, no, they, they, uh, they had a top four Quake team this yes. last year. They won Dota, Collegiate Dota. So. Right. Um, you know, very prominent esports school, the Tigers of RIT. Yeah, just in general, uh, R yeah, RIT doing very well over on Delta. They're tied for first with the University of Central Florida. So um, that's more likely going to be the top two teams. But Penn State and Rutgers are tied for uh, third, potentially second place, depending on how the games go. It's a very uh, kind of a coin toss right now who is going to be that second place. But between Rochester Institute of Technology and University of Central Florida, one of those teams is going to be in the first place for Delta Division and move on, guarantee themselves a spot into the playoff brackets for the Delta Division. But again, that second place, it's going to get really scary there for, uh, for all those teams, especially if Penn State and Rutgers end up winning their games. Uh, it could, again, throw a huge wrench into that uh you know, into into that into the Delta Division second place and to decide who goes on to the playoffs. But over the Beta uh, Beta Division, it's uh, New Mexico State University. They're pretty much squared away into the into the playoffs. Simon Fraser, though, along with University of Colorado at Colorado Springs, they're going to be tied for they're tied for second. Going to be competing to see who goes on to the playoffs with New Mex uh, New Mexico State University. And as I talk about that, we're finally getting into the bands of game number two here. Uh, yeah, so look uh, at this. Picks. Actually, well, yeah. so we 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 appear to have missed a round uh, yeah. because the score is one to one. I am being told that that is correct. Yes. So whatever happened, ISU certainly making the comeback play. We knew they had have time to discuss what went down, but this time, uh, you know, obviously working well in their favor for this first round, potentially holding on to that pickup for Ash. Going to be a pretty big one there if it does opt for it. It is still aggression, right? Just. Just so much. Attackers need to locate and defeat yeah, there is uh, quite a bit there. And actually, so yeah, we don't have much to go on for that second round, obviously. But the first round, we Attackers do, and that was an aggressive pickup on the first round for ISU. And like you said, they're still keeping with that one. Straighten out the Zofia for the Ash, and this time they do have a Thatcher uh, to go with them as well. So keeping with that Buck, keeping with that Habana. And, but yeah, like you said, aggression coming out with the two hard breachers. They lost their first uh, in the first round. They lost Habana early. And they weren't able to hard breach as much as they wanted to. This time, they have a backup with that Thatcher. Oh, not the Thatcher. I'm sorry, Thermi. I think I might have called him Thatcher earlier. Too. I think I keep calling him Thatcher, but I do. You know, it's, it's 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 peanut butter and jelly. They, they both slap on us. I mean, this is the classic combination. In yes. Yeah, very much so. And uh, we're gonna see that classic combination coming out in two different ways with Thatcher mashing up with. Uh, I don't know if you want to call it two flavors of jelly, but either way, Herbana and Thermi here. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you got you got. Jelly, then jam, and there's all sorts of, of uh, you know, people that would love to yell at you over what you know, the difference. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was raised in the country. I mean, I I, I want to say I know, but you were raised in the South. I should probably say you know too. So, uh, so, so I, I know, I, I know, you have grape jelly, but then it's it's you know, um, like strawberry yeah. jam, right? So yeah, jam has like. Speaking of jam, we may be finding one of these oh, players in a jam. The shatter just gets him right through. Definitely putting Ranger in a jam that time around and locks him right on down. The smoke, too, to go down so early. There's no way of popping those smoke bombs at this point. And that is going to give a ton of wiggle room over to the side of ISU to try to win out the rest of this round. It's just lesion that they have to worry about environmentally as well as the equalize. And uh, speaking of environmental air, speaking, speaking of anything, Ash, the fra main fragger for ISU going down. Ash, super fast, very lethal. And that's going to be taken away from ISU. They still do have a buck, though. And they are still actually going to be pecking off uh, members of Lafayette as Doc goes down. So they actually have Doc and Maestro. That's something we didn't point out. They have two of the heavy defensive anchors on the side of Lafayette. And they were two ACOGs. They still have one ACOG left, that being in the Maestro. So uh, they got around my query by just picking two of those ACOG defensive uh, operators. So you know, props to them. But Doc does go down as we see Thatcher looking through the hole in the ground. Trying to do that vertical game. Is it going to work out for him, though? Yes, it, it does. does. 
Yeah, we thought maybe the challenge from the Legion was going to be enough there, but no, not the case this time. And with just over a minute left on this one, it's down to Jaeger and Maestro here. We saw her major fracture, Maestro, coming up clutch in the end of the first round. We'll see if he can do it again, because this time it was 2v2e1 originally. Now it's a 2v4, and the momentum, if it can be established in any direction, does, I think, technically have to go in favor of Iowa State here. We'll see whether or not it's something they can pick up. A lot of tension around these hatches right now. Still the Thatcher, still the Thermite, and the Habana, and the Buck. The breaching potential so heavy for Iowa State. Not going to look at that spot out, but it's a quicker reaction anyway. Shatter finishes oh. that kill clean with the pistol, and now it's just down to Major Fracture. He finds the first one with the headshot. Second one goes down as well. He will not Wait. be intimidated and bullied off of this one. The health bar, not huge. And not at all. Obviously, the uh, the diffuser down, so a big line of questions here. The pre-fires as well come out, but he's got them tagged, actually, on his screen there, so he should know just about where he's looking. He's got the pre-peak ready, but the fire not coming out. He's looking through his own evil eye here. Can he make it happen? Does at least harass him off of a position with a diffuser already halfway done. He's got to go and go now. This is so nail-biting for Fractured. He has one shot left and he goes down. And that is so sad because that was going to be a hero's comeback for Fractured, but it's not going to happen. Denied by ISU. They're able to uh, put the pressure on, keep it mounted, take that round number three. Pretty big pickup, all things considered. Having the third round go their way, that puts them up by one, two to one. Obviously, it's a long road for four more, but whether or not they'll find it remains to be seen. We'll see what change-ups they decide to go with here, because, you know, yeah, I don't think you take Major Fracture off the Maestro at all. I think you leave that just the rest of the game and enjoy just watching that you know, stack up kills because uh, he's been fairly consistent with that. The visual ah. as a shake up there, something that's uh, got me interested in. Okay, a big question marks around this Ying. Ying is a different one. I <laughs> I have seen Yings played uh, to the point of detriment for their team, and they're going to keep with it where exactly. you throw the uh, flashbangs in, in and it actually works against your team. Obviously, ISU going to be a little bit more coordinated, I would assume, with their flashbangs, but it is a little bit of a left field. I wouldn't consider it a very... Yeah, I mean, I guess it is an aggressive pick. I mean, you throw in the flashbangs, you, that does prompt you to go in, but um, it is going to be interesting how they use that with only one hard breacher this time around. That's usually what we see, but no Thatcher to work with uh, with that hard breacher, with that Thermite. So very interesting to see what ISU pulls out here. Yeah, it's it's got me certainly curious. I feel like Ying is, is easily one of the most forgettable operators in this game. If you were to just, you know, from oh. memory, try to name as many operators as you can. I don't think Ying would be too high on many people's list. Obviously, I have Ying names out there that are just listening to me say this and, and you know, turning red in the face and <laughs> apoplectic with rage. But, you know. Apoplectic? Yeah, it's, it's a good word. And I hear that. Yeah, that's very good. Just, if you're hating on him, apoplectic. So, uh, you guys keep that in mind. Yeah, no, it's, it's basically the only, the only reaction you can have as a Ying fan. <laughs> Fair otherwise, enough. It's, it's just disloyalty, and and what kind of world do we want to live in where, where that's allowed? Ah, uh, very fair. That, yeah, that's fair. And speaking of disloyalty, we're not going to be seeing any of that in here because this is a five v five Lafayette versus who wins here. They tie up the first place spot in the gamma division and uh, still keep their hopes alive from moving on. So, want to uh, ISU? They want to. They want to be able to uh, solidify this one. Make sure that they are. You know, still in contention for that playoff spot as uh, we see some vision going down here. Oh, not vision, I should say drones going out here. Droning around, trying to spot out, scout out where Lafayette are coming in from. Or not not, not Lafayette coming in from, where Lafayette are stationed. Right, the defensive. Anchor. Right, very much so. As well. We do, again, see the two ACOG defensive operators on the side of Lafayette. Maestro, once again, mainstay, but he is down but not out. Actually, I think he just went... No, no, it was Doc that went down, so Maestro is still down, not out. Bad position for Lafayette. Yeah, things starting to come off the wheels a little bit here. They had a pretty good round one win. It did come down to a 2v2, but at this point, ISU really starting to separate that. You know, that was a story for last game as well. ISU, they lost a couple rounds, especially in the early point, but when they made the adjustments that they needed to, 
Ooh. It became so much harder. Speaking of adjustments, though, Ranger oh. adjusting a few members of ISU out of this game, but does go down for himself. And now it's all down to Suzuki here on this Legion. And you find it. Looks like he's got at least the first makings of it, but no, that will be round four. The third one now in favor of ISU in a row, and they put themselves officially halfway to victory. They're looking very good here, and again, ISU, they have something to fight for here. Lafayette, they're just fighting to spoil right now. If they can spoil ISU, props to them. That's a hilarious story for them, but it's not what ISU want. They're fighting for their uh, for their placement in this tournament right now, and they're fighting very well. They're looking very good. One to three right now. They lost that first round, uh, had some tech issues after that, came back, and have won three rounds in a row. Maestro, once again, being hovered over along with that dock. Lafayette, they like this composition, but it's not working out too well for them. We're going to see if they stick with the castle, though. It'll be interesting if they stick with the castle. I can't imagine them doing that, especially with Zofia running around and Buck being able to blast those down pretty easily. Man, I love castle. I hope they stick with it. Obviously, it's not a great <laughs> I idea. I you like castle. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's the big change of Jaeger. No surprises there. So Ella being swapped out for the Vigil, but besides that, all things staying fairly consistent there. The Doc as well, somebody that is Attackers in need to locate and this, this many particular bombs game. So we'll see whether or not this can be a stop, a, a much needed pumping of the brakes if you are Lafayette here. They're just taking stock. I think they're winding down a little bit and, and kind of mentally prepping for this round because it seems like Attackers the change-ups here, bringing the Ella in. Hot swapping the, the dock for the Jaeger, which I don't think is fooling anybody. These seem to be fairly minor adjustments, but ones that could pay dividends for themselves here. Maestro and Legion still the kind of crux of this composition when it comes down to just making a nuisance for ISU. So you have Ella now, so that's going to be a big business too. Sure, yeah. So that's, that's, they haven't deviated from their core, so we'll see whether or not this is... This is the right kind of adjustment because it's been small uh, differences in, in several of these losses here. Uh, yeah. They come down to just a 1v2 or, or something similar. So. Scooby get shot up a little bit there on the, on the uh, spawn fire. Mm. That coming out from the dock. So that is the point. They do have dock. They do have Maestro. They just switched it, but they do they did retain the dock in the end. They still have the Jaeger as well, of course. But uh, they do have that that advantage with the spawn peaking uh Lafayette does again two ACOGs does that for you and able to get a couple a little bit of damage down and now that that was actually on Scooby Scooby goes down yeah taking out the Scooby nice and early gonna feel pretty good for themselves there and gonna free up a lot of room to roam now for the remaining members or the, the entire members of Lafayette here they're not gonna be as worried about just sending that Ella into any kind of precarious situations you can just kind of have free reign and worst case they end up back in a 4v4 and obviously that's not ideal uh but they're they're sending that out as a risk that they hope will indeed pay off here to come over a minute expired minute 15 just about and the rome game from the side of lafayette is pretty interesting this is going to be a little bit tricky to navigate here as the early shots do come down but nothing quite registering just yet it's a tough one situation here for ranger he wants to find it but does actually go down can't stem himself in time they know to follow through with a kill onto the dock so the 4v3 the 3v3 this, this is getting very interesting it's the jackal it's the thermite it's the capital left and look at that they find another one so now just just captain thermite make it just thermite this is now very tricky all on the shoulders of yugzy can he clutch this one up it's a tall order, and this might be going two to three. Very tall order is, yeah, it is. It's one to th one versus three right now, but he just hits an Ella concussion blast, and that is not going to do him any favors. He has to watch his back and his front and his side as he gets taken down. That was a nice pickup by Lafayette University. Yeah, no chance of holding on to that one when it all got down to the wire. There was just so much. So we talked about those minor adjustments. It seemed to be paying off well for the side of Lafayette here. We'll see if they can keep that going in because that is the side switch so unfortunate that they just figure out the composition maybe that works for them at the very end but it still will buy them around that's much needed for not getting this game too far away so we'll see now what each team opts to do with the side switch because you know we have some data from their operators last game that they played but you know the map gonna change things 
can see you know, obviously the second floor um gonna, gonna change up the comp as well there and interested to see if they stick with this rook they yeah uh it's been the rook or the duck i mean they've been opting uh well at least i should say i mean i see hasn't opted for anything it's the first time they're on defense map this week but lafayette they opted for two acogs on the defensive side two heavy anchors may show sure being the mainstay he has the evil eyes you need that extra vision uh, they are going to go with the Rook, so they're going to have that a little bit extra, uh, extra, uh, I guess, cushion damage, cushion health. Those sweaters with those vests on the side of ISU. That is, of course, if they get hit in the body, if they get hit, hit in the head, it doesn't really matter what you wear, you're going to die. Mm. They also do have the Mute to work with here. Yeah, I'll think for the Mute over the smoke. Something interesting to see whether or not Kenja's going to be able to pull that one off very well. The Thatcher on the side of Lafayette causes a little bit of trouble but this second floor is a little bit harder to you know use thatcher to his full extent with just because it does you know rely so heavily on just some of those uh early window breaches so so having the mute there on a window that you know has popped out something that you can obviously defend very well does make it a little bit trickier for him to just get that equipment busted up in there so we'll see whether or not that's kind of part of their overarching strategy and they do have a lot of fraggers they do have ying if you want to call Ying Fragger, of course, but definitely the Ash. Again, one of the fastest operators here. Very lethal. Quick headshot and back into safety. It's usually what you see Ash do. And then, of course, you have the Jackal as well. So, no hard breacher, but they do have a lot of firepower on their side. As you see Jackal scaling the side of the consulate building. Going to go on top here. Maybe scout, try to scout somebody out with his gadget from the top side. But so far, we just see peeking coming out through the windows. Not too much aggression. Playing it slow on the side of Lafayette. No huge surprises there. Lafayette, we saw them like to play slower last game on Oregon when they were attacking. That was so long ago as they did start the game out that way. But look at that, a 4v5 to clip off just quickly from ISU. He's just gonna go down. There is no dock, no one coming to save you this time around, so we'll quickly even it up to a 4v4, thanks to the speed coming from Platt on Ash here, just moving in as quickly as possible. And look at that, another pair of trades just makes it a 3v3, 2v3 actually, getting a little bit trickier now for the attacking side. ISU on this defense. We'll see whether or not they can clutch out. They are uh, in a pretty good position thus far with only the Ying and the Capitao to worry about. We'll see with Rook anchoring in just heavily. You know, have the Jaeger and the Maestro around. This does not bode well for Lafayette. This is one thing I don't like about Ying is that if you do throw uh, you know, her flashbang gadgets in, honestly, you can just kind of, for the most part, turn around and be fine with them. It leaves you a little bit vulnerable, but they're not super effective uh, oh yeah, overall, that's why you don't see too many Yings. Of course, Ying, uh, you know, does have the purpose, does have the team comp, you can build around her, but I don't know if we're really seeing it properly this, uh, you know, today. And that's from both ISU and Lafayette. We haven't really seen Ying come to too much play here as we see flashbangs. I think those, yeah, those were going off just now. It does run into a lesion trap, so I'm gonna slow her down just a little Ooh. bit. Capiteo, though, I like yeah, Capiteo. Yeah, a lot of utility coming out from that operator. We'll see whether or not he can, you know, use oh. clutch up on this one now with so little HP left, and he finds himself a kill for it. It's a one v two. Now he's got the Maestro and the Jaeger left. And that's going to be really tricky. The Diffuser as well, not even in his possession. Only 15 seconds left on this clock. Left. Don't think that's going to happen. Nah. Yeah, it is going to be round six going over to the side of Iowa State. They're going to be four to two in this one with only two more rounds on the arguably easier side to find themselves a win and stay alive in this game of division. You know, theoretically, it is going. I mean, defense is always the easiest one uh, because the enemy has to come to you. You can scout them out. You can try to play. You can be the chess master and try to play, make them move the way you want. Of course, as on the attacking side, you want to try to be able to move the way you want to, but it is so much easier on the defensive side. You have so much to work with, and uh, ISU, they're looking good, two and four. Might be pulling out a glass for Lafayette, which is it's interesting. A Monty, I would be, hmm. I actually be, I'd actually be very surprised they pulled out a Monty. If they pull out a Monty, that's just Lafayette thinking, okay, this is desperation. Let's just have play to have fun. Let's play on our comfort picks. Turtle Hawk, you like Monty? Play some Monty because uh, you don't see too much of that in competitive play. 
No, you do not. Pulse as well is something that's going to be some, uh, you, a little bit of a change up for Shatter there, but yeah. definitely not as out of left field as, as say, the, the Monty. And but... the Monty. It's it. It's it. There you go. Well, there you go indeed. <laughs> Interesting to see whether or not uh, this is going to have a huge impact on the game. I'm not sure exactly why you picked Glass going into the split floor here at, at, at Tellers and in basement, but... We'll see whether or not that does uh, pop off. Or I can see the glass being, you know, kind of useful on this map in, in uh, some of the more open areas. But this, not really one of them. Frost is well coming out for Zach again. You know, we saw that Frost Trap have a huge you know, round winning implication yeah. back on Oregon. We'll see whether or not this is something that's uh, going to repeat itself or not. Laz is going to be an interesting one here, but we're seeing, uh, uh, like you said, a pretty big change up on the side of ISU as well. They're keeping with their two anchors, keeping with the Rook, keeping with the Maestro. Switching over to Mira. We haven't seen a Mira in a good bit. We saw a lot early on in Oregon, but not, I don't think we've seen one yet in Consulate, but we're seeing it now. Frost as well. And yeah, the Pulse coming out for the first time in, I think, a long time. I think I might have seen one Pulse so far. Uh, <laughs> competitive play, and that's just being streamed, of course. I'm sure other people do play Pulse, but they don't see too much of it. And of course, uh, for anyone new to Rainbow Six Siege, Pulse he has a little uh, little gadget he pulls out. You can see through the walls, the uh, heart beats through the walls. Uh, it does have a limited range, but you see where the heartbeats of the enemies are. Uh, and that being through ceilings, through walls, uh, heart surfaces, anything like that. So it is, uh, it is interesting. Glass, though, shooting a hole through that garage door on the basement area. Trying to scout out anyone he can. It's not working out too well for him. I mean, he does have, of course, the scouting vision here, but not going to be finding anybody is my point. Not yet, anyhow. And no one dead off the rip the first minute of play. Relatively quiet. Just some setup coming around. And see whether or not they can start knocking down pieces in all the right ways. This is definitely where Lafayette need to come back to life in this series. This be the turning point if they can stop the momentum from building up on to iowa state it's just they're so entrenched with this i mean they've got the mirror they've got frost which is such a headache to deal with obviously the maestro maybe the cheese play from the monty is uh is, is what they need to pull this one back <laughs> yeah i'm actually i'm very interested in what turtle hawk is gonna do here he's uh just kind of chilling as uh, you know, Monty, he's just one of those operators you can kind of you can kind of troll the enemy team with. But we do see one member of ISU going down. That being the oh, Maestro, so that's pretty big. Yeah, definitely something they want to pick up early there. So they'll take that. Feel pretty <laughs> good about it for themselves. And yeah, hey, this is this is where it's a strategy Monty causes a lot of headaches. And now with the glass being able to keep right behind him, he knows it and Ooh. is not. Look at that play from Zach. He was ready for it. Sniffed that one out a mile away and. Made it come up pretty huge there. And now a 2v4. Monty, fresh out of friends in this situation. He's only got Thermite left to back him up. And so they'll try to supply the cover necessary for that to get the whole board in this wall. But once you do that, you don't have the cover from Monty anymore. You have to keep looking forward. So this is tricky. They're opting into it. And look at that, the C4 to come into conjunction with the kill down. Nice uh, little little play there. Work off. Maybe didn't warrant the... Uh, the excessive crouching we saw coming out, but hey, you know, you, you beat a Monty at his own game. Maybe celebrations in order. It was a valiant effort by Lafayette, and I, I'm, I am happy I got to see a, uh, a Monty, but be it as it may, we're going to see what this one comes out of. If uh, ISU is going to be the last point match, a match point for them, maybe, uh, might be the whole game coming out here. Let's see what is, uh, it's going to be brought out. I'm interested. If they brought a Monty last round, <laughs> I'm anxious to see how they change that one up. How do you how do you adapt if you you pull a Monty out it doesn't work out? What do you do to adapt? That's something that you should be asking me. Uh, I'm asking you because I don't know. Ying going to be pulled out. Might not be solidified, though, as we get the six-pick phase here. Glass coming out as well. So I'm going to see what Lafayette out here. They're going with the Thermite, going with the Thatcher. Peanut butter jelly, as you've been calling it. Yeah, just the, just, just the, the classic combo. Yeah, very appropriately named, by the way. I do say so there is Buck going to be locked in for Turtle Hawk. So a little bit of aggression coming out of Zofia and Buck on Lafayette. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. Meanwhile, one I round, see. one round to go if you are yeah. ISU. It's a so close yet so far situation because even if they do get back in and tie this up, it could still get away from them in a rather unfortunate situation if, if Northeastern or Ontario 
um, either hold the head-to-heads for a tiebreaker or, you know, kind of run away with their, their game here. So I imagine there's got to be a lot of pressure on ISU in this situation. Maybe they're just playing for fun. Maybe they're just calming it all on down. They've had a really strong showing uh, with just a lot more consistency against Lafayette this run. So I'm sure any remaining members of the Gamma Division are paying pretty close attention to this one, whether it be live or on the VOD. Yeah, Ontario Northeastern, they definitely need to be scouting out ISU because if ISU win this round right here, that means they are going to be, once again, tied for first place. Uh, that's something that uh, Ontario Northeastern, they certainly do not want. As we do see, Thermite coming in on the bot side here. There's nothing on the side of ISU to stop a Thermite charge. Thatcher not going to be needed here. Is going to be uh, being used using the therm the EMP charges for the Jaeger devices as well as the Maestro Evil Eyes. Smoke is on the side of ISU, and that is going to allow them to play sort of a chess game with Lafayette if they're able to get into and near the bombs, because that's what Smoke does best. Redirect you, predict where you're going to go, predict where the enemy's going to go, and then uh, take care of them from there. Yeah, I mean, the choke points that you can really create with Smoke definitely cause a lot of headaches for teams of really all skill levels. Oh, nice headshot, though. Just poof, right on through. Zach taken out flat. No worries in the Zofia. Not going to be a factor for the remainder of potentially this series if they can finish out here. That's oh a my huge God. pick up. It's a 1v5. Scooby. And now Turtle Hawk. All of the world is watching, at least all of this game. He had his Scooby snacks and he is finding himself the culprit here. As Turtle Hawk is the last one. He's going to pick up a kill. Looks like he might or he doesn't. I did at least find the find the shots first, but wasn't able to convert with the headshots and just allowed the reaction of Zach, who had you know also been so good this game, coming out with that one. The GG's come down. It's a 2-0 for Iowa State. We saw them a couple weeks ago do it over the uh, the, the team UNAM there, Universidad Nacional Atamana de Mexico. Now this time, taking it over Louisiana Lafayette. So two teams very far south of them. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, the almost complete opposite end of uh, of, United, of oh, not, not the United States, almost North America, of course. We do have Canada above Iowa, but it's pretty freaking far. With that being said, though, they are tied with the Canadian team now as they uh, do get that win. Means they're going to be tied with Northeastern University and University of Ontario Institute of Technology. So congratulations to ISU. They are in the running for that Gamma Division playoff spot. Absolutely. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be Bidding you adieu as this series did start a little late, run a little late, despite the uh, quick play that ISU was able to lock down with. So with that, my name is Kyle Corvus Crow. I've been joined by Joshua Feck as Quest. We love to hear your feedback on Twitter. That is at Corvus Casting and at P-H-E-Q-E-S. So if you do feel like uh, telling us what we can do better, never, uh, never hesitate to, to stop in and say hello. With that, we want to give a huge thank you as well to Iowa State, and congratulations for staying in the running. Huge thank you to University of Louisiana Lafayette playing their hearts out here for us on stream. It's not always easy to make time. So with that, believe, unless you have any closing thoughts, Beck, as I'm ready to bid us adieu. I am good to go. Congratulations to ISU. I'm good to go, and uh, thank you very much, Corvus. Sure. We'll see you all next time.